shouldn't have beat him up so bad. Well, Doc will take care of him. Yeah, we learned his lesson. Now we won't talk. Dr. Condon, yes. I've got a guy in the car. I need some help. Take a look at him. What happened? I don't know, Doc. We uh, found him lying on a curb. Yeah, that's right, Doc. Uh, you think you two can manage him? I got a bad back. Sure. You can stay where you are. on him? Oh, we didn't look. Uh, we just brought him right here. You uh, worried about your fee, Doc? Why do you think I leave my light on at night? I need every case I can get. Uh, I'm sure he's got friends or relatives. You'll collect. Uh, there'll have to be an absent report. I need your names. No, I told you, we just found him lying in the curb. There's no sense for us to get involved. We were just trying to do him a good turn. So long, Doc. Dr. Roger Condon. I want to report an emergency. Yeah, I know him. His name is Lou Miles. Detective Lou Miles. We joined the force about the same time. My squad. Yeah, but why would anyone do something like this to him? Any idea? Yeah, I have. I don't like to admit it about a fellow cop. But I have. You mean you know someone who'd want to beat him to death? No, 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 I didn't say that. I don't think they meant to go that far. If you want to kill a guy, you don't go to the trouble to beat his head in first. I think they wanted to shut him up, warn him not to talk. Then his death was an accidental. No, no, no accident. Not in our book. They beat him up, he died. That makes it murder. Murder? You say you got a good look at the men that brought him here? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, you uh, like to take a look through our mug pictures? I'll get dressed. This one helped me carry him in, put him on the table. And this one stayed in the car. He seemed to be the boss. Oh, he is. And how he is. Big Jim Craven. Calls all the shots for the crime machine in half a dozen states. He also called the shots for a few guys on the force. Lou Miles was one of them. Well, I really walked into something. Oh, you did, Doc. Jay Rocco here. Miles was on the take from him. He's Craven's big shot in this town. Joe, get somebody to wake up the DA and tell him we got an airtight murder case against Big Jim Craven and Jay Rocco. Motive, eyewitness, positive identification. Right, Lieutenant. We've already got a couple of units out to pick up Craven and Rocco. Well, you won't need me anymore, then. Are you kidding, Doc? 
You walk out on that street before we put Craven on ice and your life won't be worth a plug nickel. Oh? Oh, I see. Look, Doc, you're the key witness in a rough murder case. And without you, we don't have a case. And as soon as Craven finds out that Miles is dead, which he probably knows already, he'll realize it too. He'd actually kill me to protect himself. Like that. Murder is just simple business procedure to these rats. Yes. What did I get myself into? Carbo. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. I see. Yeah, you do that. We'll put out an APB. Something go wrong? Well, they collared Jay Rocco. Craven got away. Look, Doc, I'm sorry about this. Sorrier than I can tell you. But we've got to keep you locked in protective custody until we get Craven. Oh, no. Now, wait a minute. I put in too many years in school. I've worked like a dog day and night to build up a practice such as it is, and well, I'm not going to give that up. Look, Doc, uh, let me tell you how they work. Craven's not going to come after you himself. He gets on the long-distance phone. He calls Cleveland, Chicago, maybe Seattle. And then some guy that never saw you before in his life flies in and... That's all there is to it. Now, look, we've got to lock you up under 24-hour guard. No. I am not going to jail because another man commits murder. Now, it's, uh... Well, you're the police. It's your duty to protect me. Okay. We'll put a man with you day and night until after the trial. That's the best I can do. All right, I guess. Let's set it up. White car should be here any second. What are you doing? Packing my emergency kit. What for? You won't need it in the hotel room. I've got it all arranged. I'm not being locked up, Lieutenant. Jail, hotel room, anywhere. After what's just happened, you're going to stay here and let him try again? No, I'm not. I've made a lot of plans for my life. I intend to live a long time. So, thanks a lot, Lieutenant. For what? For trying. But I'll take it from here. You mean you're running out? Call it whatever you want. Just suppose I stop you. You can't. Not without a subpoena. By the time you get one, I doubt you'll find me to serve it. Yeah, but what about our case, Doc? You're our key witness. How will we contact you? You find Jim Craven. When I read in the papers you've got him, I'll return. Ready to testify. But until then, I... Must be your investigation team. Better let him in. Good luck, Doc. You're gonna need it. Frank, want to do some business? That's what we're here for, George. Yeah, if you special order this for me in time for opening day. Don't you ever use any standard shells? <laughs> if I did that, the, the dudes could walk in the store and buy them themselves. This way I can charge them double. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll do my best. Uh, say, can I see this? 
Oh, yeah, go ahead. Keep it. I'm finished with it. Thanks. Oh, as soon as I hear from my old customers, I'll be in to pick up their licenses. Good. Aren't you? Yes, uh, a little. Nothing happening at the store. It won't be till after the season opens. Oh, nothing happening here either. Except, look, the reservations are just pouring in. If all of these people show, there won't be a deer left in the mountain. <laughs> you know, I'll never understand men. Tramp all over the mountain, spend hundreds of dollars, risk heart attacks, just to satisfy the urge to kill. <laughs> Your father loves guns, Lori. There is whole life, practically. But not to shoot defenseless animals. <laughs> They're a hobby like, uh, oh, electric trains or stamps. Not quite. Well, besides, he has to have something. Yes, uh, of course. Where is the Colonel in there? Hmm? Isn't he always? <laughs> Afternoon, Colonel. Well, Frank. Early. Uh, slightly. Uh, this came for you today. Hmm? Oh. Yeah, it's my boar sighting charts. Boar sighting? Mm hmm. Calculating wind and drift. You mean the wind can uh, appreciably affect a bullet from a high powered rifle? Oh, you bet. Yeah, and long range shooting, say, a thousand yards of a telescopic sight. If you didn't take into consideration the wind, you could miss your target for six feet. <laughs> Not me. I couldn't see that far, even with contact lenses, let alone shoot at something. Uh, you know, Frank, gunnery, marksmanship, it's, it's almost a science, like navigation. Well, do you know that in long-range artillery fire, we actually have to take into consideration the rotation of the Earth? No, I, I didn't. Mm -hmm. Then in uh, ballistic missiles. <laughs> well, in order to hit anything, you have to be an astrophysicist. Uh, that lets me out. Uh, Frank. You spend a lot of time in the woods, don't you? Oh, just hiking, not shooting. Mm -hmm, yeah, I know. Well, uh, you know the season opens next week? I, uh... Between now and then, I could make a pretty good marksman out of you. You see, rifle instruction, that was my specialty when I was in the service. Well, thanks, Colonel, but, uh... Frank, a man really needs something that he can lose himself in. Something that he, he really loves to do. Well, when I got out of the hospital and was retired by the Army, I hadn't had all this. I'd have cracked up for sure. Frank, there's an awful lot more in life than just being a clerk in a small town store. Yes. I suppose there is. Oh, so lonely all by ourselves. Mm -hmm. Wait till the hunters start rolling in next week. You'll have all you can do and then some. I know. Oh, I've asked Martha and Oscar to report for work Sunday. Is that mm -hmm. all right? Oh, sure. Anything you say, dear, after all, you're the manager. Mm -hmm. Funny, I wonder why Frank hasn't come down yet. I'd better call him. Wait, wait, honey. Sit, sit down, sit down, sit down. Well, Frank knows what time we serve. If he were hungry, I think he'd be here. Lori, I didn't mean to talk to you about Frank. Maybe, well, maybe right now would be a very good time. What about him? Just how serious is it between you two? 
I don't know. I honestly don't. I think it could be serious, at least on my part. On your part? Mm-hmm. I like Frank, and I... Well, I think he likes me. Certainly don't sound very sure. How long have we known Frank, Dad? Almost a year now, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, even now, if, if, if I try to show any interest in him, or, or if I try to show him any encouragement, he... I don't know, he just kind of closes up like a shell. Deliberately keeps me at arm's length. <laughs> oh, I've never had that problem with a man before. And then I'm just thinking, maybe... Maybe it's better that way. Well, uh, Laurie, after all, what do we know about him, hmm? I mean, where he came from, what he is, what do we know about him? Well, he, he doesn't care to talk about himself. All right, let me ask you this, then. Does he impress you as the kind of a fellow who would be willing to bury himself in a, in a place like this and, and work as a clerk in a small town store for the rest of his life, does he now? No, he doesn't. Oh, all right. Of course he doesn't. Then why is he doing it, Laurie? Why? He's educated, that's obvious. He's intellectual, even. And I can't understand why he wants to bury himself in an in, in, in out-of-the-way resort like this. Well, I'm sure whatever it is, it's a perfectly simple and obvious reason. Besides, I'm glad he did. No. Yeah. Well, I won't judge a man. Suspicion. But on the other hand, I am not going to let him spoil things for my only daughter. Remember that. Yeah. I think maybe we're lucky. Maybe this arm's-length attitude is all for the best. Uh-uh. Hmm? Women have too much curiosity. And I'm going to find out. It'll just take me a little time. Besides, I'm not so old. Was that a medical book? Oh, it's uh, just a book on anatomy. Well, I didn't know you were interested in medicine. Oh, no, it's uh, just something to read. I wanted to talk to you. Uh, what about? About why you didn't come down to dinner and other things. Well, I, I wasn't hungry. Are you ill? No, I... Uh, well, I had kind of a shock today, and I wanted to think about it by myself. Oh, I'm sorry. I hope it wasn't serious. Nothing I'd care to talk about. You know, that's just your trouble. What? You never want to talk about anything. You've got a, a fence around you a mile high. Look, Lori, it's late, and if you don't mind, I'll... Frank, everyone needs somebody. You can't go through life by yourself. Whatever a man feels guilty of is... Guilty? Well, I mean, whenever we're in trouble, it helps to talk it over with friends. <laughs> Sometimes they can help make it seem a lot less serious. Frank, we're your friends, Dad and I. Really, we are. I wish you'd believe that. Well, it wouldn't do any good. What wouldn't? My talking to you. You're better off knowing nothing about me. Let's leave it at that. Won't you try to let us help you? I said, leave it alone, Laurie. There's only one person who can help. He's the last person in the world who would. Good night. choice, Doc. You're hooked. He's after you. One, Frank, two, code six. 
CSR 2, the other was 46 and Broadway. 6 and 4, 6 and 4, on your station. 1XL 46, 1XL 46, a 415, 304 and 1 half east. Who is it? Ram. Took you long enough. Drive 200 miles. You seem to think it's easy to shop in a different town every time. We gotta eat, don't we? I'm running out of towns. All right, all right, so it isn't easy. You think it's easy for me being stuffed away in this joint? Afraid to stick my nose out the door to get a breath of fresh air? You're wanted for murder, not me. Shut up! I'm sorry, hon. Forget it. Yes, it'd get on anybody's nerves. Doctor, that stinking doctor. It's made the world too small for him and me to live in at the same time. Well, the boys will find him. Jim, you've got to take it easy. Relax or you'll flip. All units on frequency five, stand by. All units frequency five, stand by. Twelve six. What was the name of that town that the boys said that they were going to go to? Summit City. Yeah, Summit City. I got to find that doctor, friend. They got to get him. It's either him or me. You know this town pretty well, fella? Lived up here all my life. Many strangers? Hundreds. Every summer for the fishing, every winter for the deer season. The town's kind of quiet right now. But wait till next week, opening day. Never recognize it. You could use a quart of oil. Good deal. Can he ever stay, settle down year-round? Strangers, I mean. Oh, a few. Not many, but some. How many would you say in the past year? Oh, four or five, maybe. Any of them doctors? No. We can't even keep one doctor busy full-time. Well, Doc Rayburn from over at Sparta, he comes over on Tuesdays and Fridays. Uh, you only five sixty. Does Doc Rayburn look anything like this? No, he could be this fellow's grandfather. You don't know that fellow? I'll get you change. Forget it. Oh, thanks. Any place to stay, settle down for a few days? Are you fellows hunters? In a way. Thinking we might take it up. Oh, fine. There's the Lesamore Motel right on down the street. And then a couple miles the other side of town, there's the Buckhorn Mountain Lodge, Lakeview Lodge, the Summit Cabins. Out in the country? Well, not too far. I think maybe we'll try the motel. Thanks, man. Sure. to get the best room in the motel without a reservation. And the hunting season starts. Open your bag. Oh, we can do it. Thanks, uh, uh, George. George. 
Guess you can use money well as anybody else, huh, George? More. I got a teepee full of papooses with big appetites and big yens to go to college. How'd you like to work for us? Oh, you hunters? Show them the picture. You know him? No, don't think so. We got a tip he might show here. You keep your eyes open, let us know if you see him. There's a double sawbuck in it. Oh, uh, you check with the deputy sheriff, Chet Burris. He's a good man. He uh, could... It's kind of private, kind of confidential. OK, I'll, I'll see what I can do. Why would the doc pick a jerk want a burg like this to hide out? Craven's paying us. If this is where he wants us to look, this is where we look. Finding anything, that's something else again. Better try the Buckhorn Lodge, ask some questions. They said you wanted to talk to me. Yeah, we did. Sit down. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, thank you. Good job. You should have stayed here instead of at the motel. <laughs> they told us in town you have one fellow living here year-round. Yes, we have one permanent guest. Came to Summit City about a year ago? More or less. You see a doctor? A doctor? Oh, no, no. Frank works at a sporting goods store. Frank Harlow, that's his name. Frank Harlow. Does he look anything like this? No, I'm afraid not. Well, thanks anyway, miss. Uh, what's he done? The man in the picture, the doctor. Done? As far as we know, he hasn't done anything. We're insurance men, investigators. We have to get a signature on a dotted line to settle a claim. That's all. of this stuff, he must have bought it all new since he got into town. Look at that label. Summit City. Nothing but soap. You expect it to smell like a hospital just because the guy's supposed to be a doc? Nothing. Either he's careful or he's the wrong guy. Take a look in the closet. Hey, Bert! Take a look. Comparative anatomy. I guess that does it, huh? Summit City Public Library. I don't know whether it does or whether it doesn't. Maybe. Well, it showed the Craven. No. Put it back right where it was. If this is our boy, we don't want him missing it and guessing where it is and taken off again. But Craven's sure going to hear about this.
Well, there they are. Pictures of all five new guys in town in the last year. Now it's up to Craven. I never figured I'd see those two still in town. What? Those two. They came in in the middle of the week and started asking me if we had a new doctor in town. Oh, uh, is that so? As if we even had enough to keep old Doc Rayburn busy. I tried to talk him into staying on for the hunting. They come around the store yet to give you a big order? Uh, no, uh huh? Uh, maybe they will. Eight gallons. Uh, check on second thought, maybe you better fill it out. Sure. You going someplace? No, no, no place special. least he could be on time for his own birthday. He'll be here. Yeah. <laughs> here he comes now. Hmm? Oh. Happy birthday from us. What's this all about? <laughs> A toast. And then you'll have to blow out your candles. Mm -hmm. Oh, there must be some mistake, Laura. This isn't my birthday. <laughs> I know, but we thought it would be better to celebrate it now. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Instead of waiting until all the hunters come pouring in from the city. But you couldn't even know the date of my birthday. There's no record. Record? <laughs> hey, hey, you don't know Lori. When she wants to, she's got a memory like an elephant. Remember last winter you said, Frank Harlow was born the day the hunting season opened. Oh, I see. I'm better be careful what I say to you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, a toast. Uh -huh. To you, Frank. Happy birthday. Now, you'd better blow out your candles before they burn out. Mm -hmm. This is for you. And many happy returns from us. Thank you, Bert, Frank. Oh, no, no, wait, wait, wait. I, uh, seems to me that it's customary to make a wish mm -hmm. before you blow. Hmm? Oh, what a shame. Now you won't get your wish. Too bad. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, please. What? Well, wait. I wonder what he wished for.
didn't work, did it? All this... He still won't trust us. Yes? What's wrong, Frank? If we offended you, I... Offended? No. No, Laurie, I'm, I'm very grateful. You're leaving? I was. But I've changed my mind. Why did you want to leave? I'm not sure that I have the right to stay. But I can't run anymore, Lori. Tell us about it, Frank. Let us help you. You're better off staying away. You're better off not knowing, not getting involved. But I am involved already. How? Because I love you. Oh, I fought against it. I, 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 I didn't want it to happen. Even Dad warned me. And I wasn't going to tell you just now. It just came out. We're both involved, Lori. And I wasn't going to say anything either. Oh, darling. Oh, Frank, tell me what it is. Now it concerns both of us. I don't care what you've done. You're so sure I've done something wrong. Haven't you? Maybe. But only to myself. No one else. Frank, tell us what it is. Let us help you. Laurie, a man wants to kill me. And I have no place to go. No place I'd be safe from him. No matter how long it takes, it's my life or his. Well, what about the police? It's because of the police I'm in this mess. You see, Lori, I'm the key witness in a murder case against a man. That man's name is Jim Craven. Now, as long as I'm alive, he has to hide. And unless the police find him before he kills me, I have to hide. Now I'm, I'm almost sure that Craven's men have found me. Those two strangers who came here asking questions. They were here too? They hired a little boy to take my picture. Craven couldn't risk coming here himself. Those two men are probably hired killers. Oh, but you said you decided to stay. Craven's already cost me one life. One identity. I'll not sacrifice another. Laurie. You were wrong about my birthday. You said Frank Harlow was born the day the season opened. I said he was born the day he arrived in Summit City. There is no Frank Harlow. My name is Roger Condon. Dr. Roger Condon. Hello, Dr. Roger Condon. Mm. <laughs> Why'd the boy send five pictures? Well, since we've been hiding out, five new men settled in Summit City. Any one of them could have been the doc, so the boys took pictures of them all. Now, these four are out for sure. And this one, with his hands covering his face, who could tell? Well, they'll just have to take another picture so we can see his face. Oh, great. And if it was the doc, what do you suppose he'd do while the boys were taking pictures of him? Huh? He'd take off like a scared rabbit. Be chasing him for another year. Wait a minute. What was his name, the guy hiding his face? Frank Harlow. And it checks. What does? Well, the boys found an anatomy book. A regular doctor's book when they were searching this guy's room. 
And why would he be reading anatomy if he wasn't the doctor? Even more than that, why would he be afraid of a kid with a camera? Why would he cover his face unless he was hiding out? You're right, Jim. It's got to be the right one. Yeah, not for sure, not yet. Now, there are a lot of guys hiding out in this country for a lot of reasons. Reading anatomy books? I admit it's the best lead we've had yet in almost a year. We can't afford to be wrong. What I'd give for a look at the face behind those hands. Hunting season starts when, did the boy say? Three days? That's right. Now, look. I'm going to need a, a flannel shirt, whipcord breeches, uh, high lace boot size nine and a half D, a lumber jacket, and one of those red caps with the long beak. You know what I mean? Right here. This ought to cover it. Are you kidding with that cookie outfit? Well, you want me to look good when I go hunting, don't you, baby? <laughs> now, this is a paratrooper's weapon. It's carbine. I carried that little sweetheart when I made my first training jump. So you, uh, you want to know what I think, huh? Yeah, that's why Laurie insisted I give you the whole story. Mm-hmm. Frank, did you ever hear the story about how I got this way? No, the war in Korea, mm -hmm. that's all you said. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm not much of a man anymore. <laughs> Just a collection of wires and platinum pins and steel plates and sort of all tied together inside. But you know, I'm alive. I enjoy being alive. And my main reason, my daughter, Lori. How were you wounded, Colonel? Running away. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was the big retreat in Cho Sin. You see, we hit this roadblock. We took off across this open field, and it was mined. Well, I was pretty badly hurt. But my Jeep driver, a young kid from the Ozarks, could have gotten away. Only he wouldn't run. No, he came back and he carried me out and I'm alive. He's dead. Yeah, that's funny. A young kid like that, 19 years old. Had no idea why he was there. He didn't know what the fighting was about. He... But he wouldn't run. And you think I was wrong to run away? No, from what you told me, I, I don't think you had much of a choice. But there's just one thing. It wouldn't make any difference. You, you just can't run far enough, you see? Somewhere, some, sometime, you'd have had to make your stand. <laughs> I'm awful glad you decided to make it right here with us. No, wait a minute, Colonel. Laurie knows how I feel about you two getting involved. I no, no, no. told Dad he doesn't care. Frank, Frank, come here. You're not going to deprive me, are you, now, of my one chance to be useful again? Huh? <laughs> no, for whatever we're worth, you can count on us. Thank you. <laughs> you did. Oh, thanks, dear. Frank, are you sure there isn't something the sheriff could do? What could he do? Pick up the killers? On what charge? They haven't made a move against me. And even if they were picked up, Freeman would just hire somebody else to come and get me. And in the meantime, I'd, I'd have given myself away. Craven would be sure who I was and where I was. Well, you can't just wait here for them to kill you. Lori, if I knew how to fight them, I wouldn't have run in the first place.
Laurie. They're out front, both of them. Don't look at them. They've been doing that the past two days, walking up and down in front of the store. Well, they're watching you. They're trying to make sure I don't run away. They haven't made a move. But, but if they know you're I've in here... I've been thinking about that, too. It seems to me there's only one answer. They're not sure. Not, not, not sure. You're the man they're after. Well, they must know that I know about them asking questions. Trying to take my picture. But I haven't run. And that's what confuses them. They're thinking I might be the wrong man. And until they're sure, they have no reason to kill me. But if you mean so much to them, well, they won't let you get away. They'll try to make sure. The only person who can really identify me is Craven. Laurie, that might be the answer. Craven has to see me. He has to be sure. He has to come out in the open. He has to make the move. And that's how I can fight him. Well, let him come to me. Make him come to me. Well, then there'll be three of them, three killers. There are three of us now. A cripple and a girl to help you? You and your father gave me two wonderful reasons not to run away. Why, I've, I've got to stay alive. I can't rationalize that way, Frank. I'm, I'm scared. It's got to be this way. I'm the bait in the trap. Well, let's just see how far Jim Craven will go before he realizes the hunted has become the hunter. <laughs> What friend? It says you're expecting it. Name's Mr. Booth. It's the big man. Sticking his neck out like that. Hello, boys. Did you forget I was coming? We didn't expect you so soon. Well, thanks, Mr. Booth. Okay, George, if we want anything, we'll call you. Well, not after tonight. Why not? You quitting? I start hiring out as a guide. Let's see, uh, if you haven't already got a guide, Mr. Booth, uh, maybe we can talk some business. Yeah, well, maybe. We'll talk about it later. A uh, man can get lost real easy in them woods. Uh huh. We'll remember that. I'm never expecting you to show yourself, Mr. Craven. Mr. Booth. Yeah, Mr. Booth. Don't forget it. What's the rundown on this one? Frank Harlow. You think he might be the doc? Uh, it could be. But with his face half hidden behind his hand, who could tell for sure? I only saw him myself for a couple of minutes. Came to town a little less than a year ago. Works at the sporting goods store. Lives at Buckhorn Lodge. What else? Sticks pretty much to himself, doesn't talk much. Nobody seems to know where he came from or why he ended up here. And why he reads anatomy books and why he hides his face when he sees a camera, huh? Where's he now? Still in town? Last time we checked, we've been checking twice a day. Did he... did he see you? Like I wanted him to? He saw us, all right. Uh, no, I don't know. If he was the duck, why didn't he scare and take off, huh? Why would he stay? Because he could be the wrong guy. I want to get a good look at his face. Without anybody knowing that I'm here, without him getting suspicious. How? Look, I'm paying you a lot of good money. If I don't think of something, you better. Well, today's the big day, huh, George? You can always tell when he gets the coon tail cap out of mothballs. Yeah, I have to wear it. Self-defense. Self-defense? Yeah. Makes me look like an animal. <laughs> you know, those dudes never hit animals. All they hit are other hunters. <laughs> yeah. Well, whatever they shoot, they gotta have licenses. How about your clients, George? 
Yeah, I picked up five tickets yesterday from Frank. Yeah, yeah. There they are, checked off on the list. Oh, yeah. Oh, Frank, uh, you get that special order? All ready for you. Hello. Yes, sir. I'll be very happy to. Fine. Well, I'll bring it all over as soon as the boss gets back to handle the store. Well, any time now. Opening day is our busiest season. Sure. Goodbye. <laughs> Everything there, George? Yeah, it looks okay. Say, George, uh, do you have a fellow named Booth at the motel? Yeah, I checked in last night. Oh. Oh, well, that was Booth on the phone. Wants me to bring a complete outfit over to the motel room. Gun, shells, game bag, the works. Well, this could be a three, four hundred dollar sale. Why didn't he come here? Well, he's waiting for friends. He said he wanted to leave from the motel. Well, that lets me out. I figured I'd pick up an extra couple of dollars guiding him. Say, according to this list, uh, this booth doesn't have a license yet. Oh? I'll drop over to the motel, remind him. Oh, well, here's a license blank. Tell him I'll get the stuff up there as soon as I get away. Sure thing, Frank. So long. Dr. Rayburn, we never expect you until 11. I know, but uh, this is opening day. Oh. You know, I've had my eye on a prime eight-point buck up there on South Peak, so I thought I'd come out early and sneak in ahead of the mob and pick <laughs> him off. Well, we will have time for our weekly cup of coffee, won't we, after you examine Father? Well, I might miss that buck. I hope the poor thing does get away. <laughs> Has the uh, Colonel been behaving himself? No excitement, no uh, violent exercise? Well, he hasn't been running the mile too often lately. <laughs> I'm Chet Burris, deputy sheriff and game warden in these parts. I heard you men were hunters, so I thought I'd drop by to remind you to pick up your licenses. All right, get back. Craven, Jim Craven. My name's Booth. I've seen your wanted posters long enough. If your name's Booth, you can prove it down in my office. All right, now let's go. Stupid hick, he had to stick his nose in. What do we do? Get rid of them. What else? Take them down the woods. Make it look like a hunting accident. All those guns going off down there. I don't hear another shot. Here. Put my coat and hat on them. If anybody asks any questions, it will seize you. It'll look like Mr. Booth's got a load on. And hurry back. That joke of the store gets here. I don't want to meet him alone. Come on, come on. Get him out up too long. No, but I better be on my horse or that buck is going to be making tracks into the next county. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, for one, hope you get him. And remember, if you do, we like venison. Yeah? I'll save you a whole quarter. <laughs> well, Good. I'll see you folks next week. All right, Doc. Goodbye, Dr. Rayburn. Goodbye.
that he was standing. Put him up against that tree. Now stand back quick before he falls. Better give one more, make sure. A guy don't get hit twice in one accident. George. How bad is it? Bad. Well, uh, I better not move you. I'll go get Doc Rayburn. Frank, we've got to get Doc Rayburn. What, an accident already? Chet. He's out in the woods, shot through the middle, bad. It's almost 11. He's due at the lodge to check on the colonel. Give me the lodge, please. It's Doc Rayburn's day to be in town. Hello, Laurie. Has Doc Rayburn arrived there yet? He what? He got there early and left to go hunting. He said he was going up on South Peak after a buck he saw there. South Peak. George, if you could get up there. Yeah, thanks, Lori. I'll let you know. Well, we can't leave him out there alone. Grab that kit, will you? Where is he? Near the bend on the road to the lodge. Clear it just off the left side. You'll find it. Doc Rayburn. Don't talk. George has gone after him. Where? Rayburn's hunting. Frank, it, it's bad. I need a doctor. No, Frank, you can't do anything. You'll just make it worse. Relax, Chad. No, no, leave me alone. Let the doctor take care of it. Relax. I am a doctor. You? A doctor? Gotta get you back to the lodge. The lodge? Yeah, my things are there. over an hour. Maybe something's cooking. Take a walk down past the store. See if he's still around. Let's get me the jumps. 
Are you sure nobody saw you get rid of that deputy? Sure, we would have heard about it by now if they did. Get him inside. Oh, it's such a bad wound, Frank. Oh. He'll be all right. Frank, what's the situation? We'll have to draw the fluid from his lungs before he drowns. I'll oh. have to operate right away. Oh. My emergency kit. It's hidden in the basement. Well, but what about Craven? If he if he knows about what you've done, he'll know you're a doctor. Not much I can do about that now. I'll use the big carpenter's bench down there. It'll have to do as an operating table. Well, Frank, uh, what can I do to help? Isn't there something? Yes, uh, I'll need a strong lamp, yeah. clean sheets, towels, and blankets. All right, fine. I'll get them for you right away. If he's really on the run, do you think he'll stop off at the lodge? Got any other ideas? Chet. How did the accident happen? It wasn't an accident, Laurie. Chet told me all about it. Jim Craven's here in town. His killers tried to murder him. Frank, if, if Craven's here... I can handle things now, Laurie. You go upstairs and stay with your father. Make things look normal. Do you think he'll come here? He came to Summit City for one reason. He knows I live here. Lori, I wanted it this way. I wanted him to be out in the open. We'll just have to wait and see. Oh. Well, I'll go upstairs. Got a fellow named Frank Harlow living here. His car's outside. Where's his room? He isn't here right now. But all right, hold it right there, all of you. You know, Mr. Craven, I know how to use this. I don't force me to prove it. Drop it, pops. Pop. Drop it now. I'm not waiting, pops. We're busy guys. He won't bother anybody now. No, no, leave him there on the floor, no! Harlow's key was in the box. Oh. Place smells like a hospital. Hospital. What do you know?
He must have made it to the woods. I can hear you, Craven. You want to know something? I'm sorry about all this. That cop wasn't supposed to die. If he hadn't, I wouldn't have been here now. Neither would you. Are you apologizing for wanting to kill me? The way things are, I can't let you live. Not if I want to live myself. And that means the girl and father have to die, too. Are you going to apologize to them, Craven? If he had a gun, he would have used it by now. Go get him. I'll get you, Doc. Don't you forget it. This is only round one. Too, Craven. You want to know something? I'm not sorry about this. I can't even apologize. Out. Where's Jeff? In the basement. Good shooting, Colonel. <laughs> you bet. 